Welcome back to Dunstan Kiwi Bread. We continue on the theme of new arrivals now and head to Waikato Stud, where former New Zealand Horse of the Year Ocean Park's first foals have hit the ground. I spoke to Mark Chittick about the quality of his offspring. He's been dubbed one of the most exciting new sire prospects in the modern era and wait for age his racing form was, well it rivalled some of the greats. How's he tracking here at Waikato Stud 12 months into his new role? Yeah, really well actually Alicia, um, he, he settled into it very well. I think what we've all learnt with him, and we learnt it very quickly with, with Ocean Park, is um, he's a very very relaxed horse, he's a very intelligent horse um, and he just, he loves learning things and he, lo he, he loves pleasing you. Um, yeah, he's got a little bit of spark about him when he when he hits the breeding shed and and, uh, and 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 with that sort of business. But at the end of the day, uh, he settled in really well. And as I say, he's he's a delight to have around. He's he's quite a character and super intelligent. Let's talk about some of his foals. There's uh, quite a few of them on the ground now, um, and they've been hot conversation amongst breeders too. What do you make of them? Yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, when a when a horse goes to start at um, at, at as a ten million dollar syndication, there's there's high expectations. He serves some he serves some wonderful mares. He's I think he ended up with 100 and, um, nearly 140 mares in foal. So, you know, you, you are sitting there uh, anxiously awaiting. Um, and um, certainly so far, um, uh, well, I think we're at a stage now where we can, we can guarantee he, he's leaving consistent good types. Um, the reports earlier on, a lot of the other farms actually got, them, got, got numbers before we did. Windsor Park's um, uh, foal was, a, was an outstanding foal. Um, uh, Trelawney, they had a couple of really nice foals. And, and I was talking to Leon Casey at, at Pencaro just last week and I asked him about his Frankel foal and he said, oh, it's, a, it's a very good foal, but he said, probably the best on the farm is our Ocean Park. So hearing all those reports is, uh, are really encouraging and look, he's a lovely horse himself. Um, he sold well as a yearling and yes, you always hope that they, that they leave types like themselves or good types and um, at this stage we're very happy. We're seeing a, a bit of a selection here of his foals today. Let's talk about uh, firstly the Ocean Park Donna Cativa colt. Yeah, lovely, lovely young mare to start with. She, she was a dual listed winner in, um, in Melbourne, trained by Danny O'Brien. She was a $310,000 uh, yearling and we purchased her at the end of her racing career. And of course, it's, it's probably the hottest family just at the, just at the moment. Um, she's, a, she's a full sister to, to uh, Il Quala Veloce and the mare's a, um, a, a sister to, uh, to Par 4 who, who's just you know, setting the world on fire at the moment um, throughout Australasia. So it's a hot family. This is her first foal. Um, you know, it's a mare that we paid a bit of money for and, and um, that, that, that follows in the footsteps of the sort of, you know, the thing we do with our, with our quite often do with our young sires um, and uh, put a nice mare like that to him and we're really happy with the foal. Second up, Mark, the Ocean Park Go Aldana Colt. He's uh, what was one of your first ones here. Yes, yeah, he was one of the first colts, and a uh, big, strong mare and a big, big, strong colt. Um, uh, you know, the, the mare, the mare hasn't got the best pedigree. She's done a nice job. She's left, she's left a few winners, but uh, just a nice, robust mare to, to, to test the Ocean Park out on, and um, the type that she's left is outstanding. Let's take a look at uh, one of his fillies, born the 6th of September, the Ocean Park Make-A-Wish filly. Really nice filly, um, lovely nice young mare, uh, she, she won the two races herself and one of our, out, of, out of one of our old families and uh, she's out of Star Scent herself, um, she's a nice young mare, I, I think she's, she's probably one of our most um, up and coming young mares, um, the, the types that she's left so far and, and this foal uh, fits right in with that um, lovely type of filly, probably looks as though it could go a little bit earlier. Um, uh, than, than what the family uh, usually uh, trends towards. So, you know, so that's, that's something to look forward to. And, and as I say, a yeah, nice foal out of a nice young pins mare. Ocean Park's an esteemed company. He's one of only six superstar racehorses to have completed that Underwood, Caulfield and Cox Plate treble. What was it about his makeup that allowed him to win at that elite level? It, that's a that's a very interesting question, and I think looking at the horse now, like he's a lovely athletic horse to look at, and and I know we all say afterwards that, you know, he he, he is a race a racehorse, he is an athlete, um, and but I think there's no truer word spoken with with Ocean Park when you look at him when you break him down, he just looks like an athlete. He looks like he should run, and he and he did run, and I think on top of that, as we alluded to earlier on, with the with the super superior intelligence that the horse has, and the and the sort of um, go and do it attitude. And that's how that's how he won his races. Um, tough, and let's just get out there and do it. 
Um, I think all of those things in, um, into the pot together, you know, helped in um, winning those, you know, those five Group One races all in total. You mentioned he had a book of around 140 last season. What is it that's attracting breeders to Ocean Park on pedigree, of course, by the late great Thorn Park and out of that wonderful female family? Talk us through it. Yeah, well, well, he was a $10 million um, buy, and uh, uh, so it was, a, it, was a, it was a large syndication, and, um, and, uh, and we were incredibly well supported. Um, we had him syndicated in 24 hours. Um, and, and it's quite a major investment for, for those for those sorts of people, including ourselves. We, we own half the horse ourselves. So, um, you know, it's our policy to put some of our nice young mares like Donna Kativa, Make-A-Wish, et cetera, that we've seen today. Um, legs went to them last year, so it is, that is our policy. Um, and I think when with the shareholders, when they have an investment at that level in a horse, they always support them really well. Um, but I believe he had everything. He, 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 well, he's got everything. He's got, the, he's got those five group ones. He's New Zealand Horse of the Year. He won the Cox Plate. And as you say, on top of that, unfortunately, the ill-fated uh, Thorn Park. So a lot of those shareholders, a lot of, and, and even outside of the shareholders, um, they've, used, they've used Ocean Park because they may have had success with their mayor or their family off the back of Thorn Park um, because he was doing a wonderful job. So you've got that there. Out of a nice young Zabiel mayor, um, who fortunately we did... You know, we were showing her ability before she, um, before she uh, unfortunately broke her leg in the Avondale Guineas, I think it was. Um, and you know, you've got a nice pedigree there, with and and it, and it all goes back to O'Reilly's family. So it's a pedigree that we all know. There's been continued success through it, and as I say, by Thorn Park out of a, out of a Zabiel mare, it was, it's a lovely mix. Thirty thousand dollar stud fee. It's unchanged this year. How's his book shaping up? Uh, this time round, I mean, is that strength continuing in the market for him? Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, you know, people did want to see his foals, which is fair enough. Um, so, so we've certainly picked up some um, uh, a fair bit of momentum just in the last couple of weeks. And um, yeah, last year, yeah, just just off 140 in foals. So he, I think it was 100, and nearly 160 mares that he actually served. And I think if we can serve a book of a 120, 130 this year going into his into his second season, I'll be very happy. We're sort of not far off that now, and um, as I say, the, the, the more people see his foals and, and, the, and the more foals that people get, um, it, he'll pick up a few of those nice mares that um, haven't been committed at this stage. Waikato Stud are delighted with the stock of Ocean Park, and we wait with anticipation to see how they develop over the next 12 months. Well, it's now time for Kiwi Bread Abroad, and we head up to Singapore to link up with New Zealand Bloodstock's Mike Kneebone. Welcome to another edition of Kiwi Bread Abroad. It's the show brought to you with the compliments of the Singapore Turf Club, who race from their Cranji base here every Friday and Sunday. Well, on this week's show, we're going to be catching up with the connections of dual Group 1 winner Spilato. He's the Kiwi Bread that's won the Patrons Bowl and the Emirates Singapore Derby. I know you've been coming up to Singapore to watch him race since mm -hmm. he won his second start. He's only had four starts. You were here for the Patrons Bowl. That must have been an enormous uh, thrill for everybody. Yes, that was pretty nail-biting. He, he actually had a small injury that we thought he was over in, in the foot. Uh, he'd been pricked and um, thought he was all good. He was pinching up fine, but um, when it came down to it, he, he wasn't, and you can you can tell because he's swapping his leg all the way down the straight in that patron's ball. And Spilato fighting tooth the nail here. Spilato over on the inside. Step it up, wearing him like a glove. Still, uh, Spilato the inside with Step it up. Oh, they hit it, I'd say Spilato. The derby was completely different. Completely different. Yeah. Completely different. It he, was. He's gone out there and, and uh, really settled in the second spot pretty much straight away mm -hmm. and uh, made it a one horse race. Yeah, really I thought he was going to be swamped at the turn and we had a few friends with us and I thought this is going to be embarrassing, you know, he's, they're not going to understand because they're not horse people, but he's done so well and I was so wrong, <laughs> he just kicked away, it was the most exciting thing. Svalato is clear in the derby, what a remarkable story, four starts, four wins, two group ones in the Emirates Singapore derby, Svalato bolts in. You're into breeding in quite a big way now. I know that uh, you and Graham race a lot of horses up here in Singapore, but you're also breeding quite a few now in New Zealand, mm -hmm. and you've got a stallion down there as well. She, a, a, a big part of a stallion, uh, Niagara, who's an Encostado Lago horse. He's got foals on the ground now, and we couldn't be happier. They're just 
big bums, big chests, big girths. Gorgeous. Everyone who sees them is just blown away. And good friendly foals. They're really good heads on them. Most of them have got a little bit of white, but I think I've bred the only one that's <laughs> plain bay. Well, Spilato, he's a dual group one winner. He's only $10,000 short of a million dollars in prize money up here in Singapore and it looks like there's a lot more to come from this very, very good Kiwi horse. Well, that's it for this week. On behalf of the Singapore Turf Club, we'll see you next time.